In Vince McMahon's WWE, there's nothing more important than your look, which is why David Otunga, Chris Masters and the great Carly have had great careers and still do. Times change, gimmicks fall out of fashion, and if a superstar wants to stay relevant, they have to be willing to take a risk with a bold new look. For example, I used to look like this. Ah, oh, I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are the 10 best image changes in WWE history. Number 10, Husky Harris. This is just a worthless internet smarks opinion, but I think it's hard to get someone over as a fighter if their name literally has the word husky in it. Husky is the word mothers use instead of fat to comfort their bullied sons. Also bad ideas for wrestler names, Big Bone Barry and Just More to Love Johnson. Seriously though, a portly gentleman with a terrible Fred Durst beard and Dean Ambrose hair doesn't a good superstar make, so fans rejoice when Wyndham Rotunda went back to the bayou to create this infinitely more sinister minister. Number 9, Dustin Rhodes. For the better part of the late 80s, early 90s, the original son of a son of a plumber, Dustin Rhodes was a bland white meat babyface with his daddy's chin but little of his crowd support. There just wasn't anything to him beyond his surname. In 1995, Rhodes was fired from WCW for intentionally blading during a King of the Road match, which is when two wrestlers fight in a cage filled with hay on the back of a moving truck. Yes. This would turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to the second generation superstar, as he would emerge six months later in WWF, looking a little more bizarre. Number 8, Jamal. The late Eddie Fatu was a member of the Anuahi family, which is the royal family of Samoan wrestling. His uncles were the wild Samoans, and unlike The Rock, he's actually Roman Reigns' cousin. As such, he was welcomed with open arms into the WWE. His first major run was in 2002 as Jamal, part of the Three Minute Warning, a duo of burly Samoan gangsters who wore shorts and bandanas and looked as 90s as they possibly could. Despite teaming with a hairstylist and beating up lesbians, the team didn't find great success, and Jamal was fired after being in a bar fight. When he eventually returned in 2006, it was with face tattoos and the savage and also a tiny bit racist gimmick of Umaga, who went on a monster run, remaining unpinned and unsubmitted for the rest of the year. Number 7, Sparky Plug. Ah, the days when Bob Holly was the rookie and having people mercilessly beat the piss out of him instead. When Holly was given his first proper go in the WWF in 1994, it was during the long, horrible period where every superstar had to have a job-based gimmick. The bin man, the hockey player, the creepy goddamn magician. Look, times were hard back then, you need to supplement your income somehow. Hardcore Holly's gimmick? He was a NASCAR driver called Sparky Plug Thurman. Dag gum, it did not work out. They briefly tried to repackage him as Bombastic Bob as part of the new Midnight Express before he emerged from Al Snow's job squad with a new gimmick and a new attitude. The rookie battering serious fella, Hardcore Holly. Number six, Bradshaw. John Layfield managed to fit not one, but two awesome image changes into his soon to be Hall of Fame career. Good job, you from all backstage accounts, horrible person. He got his start in the WWF in 1995, debuting as Justin Hawk Bradshaw, a cowboy who was managed by Uncle Zebediah, aka Zeb Coulter, and he would brand people with JB. In ink, I mean, not searing his name into his opponent's flesh. The coward. It was bad, and after a brief sojourn as Blackjack Bradshaw, look at that moustache, he rebranded again to become simply Bradshaw, a member of Beer Swilling Roughnecks the Acolyte. And if that wasn't a good enough image change, Bradshaw digivolved again to become JBL, a pompous Wall Street millionaire. Say what you want against John Layfield, the man's got range. Number five, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. You may have heard of Triple H, he's Stephanie McMahon's trophy husband. Before the King of Kings would find fame as the game, the cerebral assassin was the Connecticut Blue Blood. Okay, actually, no, before that, let's talk about this. In WCW, he was called Terrorizing. Mm -hmm. They had two ways of spelling that as well. Here's one, and here's the other. Wrestling is stupid! So yeah, when Trips debuted in WWF, it was as pretty boy dandy Hunter Hearst Helmsley. He would curtsy, waggle his handkerchief, so far so mid-90s nonsense. Thankfully, along came best bud Shawn Michaels with two little letters that would change everything. D. X. Triple H was born, who would slowly morph into the villainous 14-time champ we all know today. Number four, Rocky Maivia. Look at this chubby-faced idiot with his ribbons, leaves, and the sort of perm that only a pineapple could love. They tried super hard to get this handsome Samoan over, but it just wasn't working. He had a natural charisma, but the fans didn't appreciate his forced good guy shtick, and so they had no choice but to turn him heel and let him play to his strengths, becoming a superstar that he always had the potential of being. So he became The Rock. This guy is cool. This guy is not. Cool, not cool. Cool, not cool. Cool, not cool. Number three, Isaac Yankum. Isaac Yankum, because he's a f***ing dentist. Ha ha ha, he's a f***ing dentist. Ha ha ha, f***ing dentist. Shut up and become Kane immediately. Glenn Jacobs is the master of the image change. He was the Christmas creature, Mike Unabom, Isaac Yankum DDS, fake Diesel, before finally 
Mercifully, they gave him Kane, one of the coolest, most instantly iconic characters of all time. Thank goodness he stuck with that and never changed his gimmick to a Newcastle grandpa running late for his court appearance. Thank goodness that never happened. Number two, Hulk Hogan. Now this might seem like an odd call because in the 80s, Hulk Hogan's Fu Manchu meets Surfer Giant look was one of the most iconic uses of red and yellow since this thing. But even wedding cakes get stale and by the mid 90s, fans had grown tired of eating their vitamins and thought their prayers could go screw themselves. So in 1996 came one of the biggest image changes of all time. Hulk Hogan dropped a leg on Randy Savage at Bash at the Beach, turning heel for the first time in 13 years. The yellow and red were gone, replaced with black and white, giving Hogan and WCW a huge resurgence in popularity. Number one, the Ringmaster. Steve Austin went through a fair few personas on his way to superstardom. He was stunning Steve Austin, superstar Steve Austin, and then when he made his way to the WWF, finally, he achieved greatness with the Ringmaster. Yep, blonde fuzz atop his head, a silly title belt that looks like the sort of huge bracelet your uncle wore in the 80s. Austin hated the Ringmaster gimmick and wanted a change. The list of personas they offered him, Otto Von Ruthless, Ice Dagger, Fang McFrost, and Chili McFreeze. Good God. Cooler heads prevailed, however, and within a month he'd shaved his head and begun calling himself Stone Cold Steve Austin. And yes, all in all, I think that was for the best. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.